Why do airplanes have flaps? You've probably been wondering this even before you decided to become a pilot. I believe that flaps are one of the most important tools that a pilot has at his disposal. And today I'm gonna explain why an airplane has flaps and how you can use them to make flying way safer and way easier. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, I'm Josh, and today we're talking about one of my favorite flight controls, the flaps. Now, flaps are a secondary flight control. They're not a primary flight control like the rudder or the aileron, but they're still super important. Flaps make flying so much safer, and I'll explain why that is in just a minute. But first, let's foot stomp a couple things that you need to know for the FAA written exam. For the written exam, I want you to remember two things about the flaps. First, they increase the lift that a wing produces, and second, they increase the drag that your wings produce as well. This in turn allows the airplane to descend at a steeper angle during approach. And that's super handy because anytime you pitch the nose of your airplane down, the airplane likes to speed up. And this actually creates more lift, which makes it harder to descend. As you can see, this can make things more difficult. One second you're descending towards a runway and then the next the airplane is leveling off because you sped up and the wings decided to create more lift. All the while you, as a new pilot, don't even realize it and then you end up going around instead of landing because you're too high. And your instructor's letting you learn all this the hard way. Yeah, what a turd. Or you could have lowered the flaps to help yourself descend because the flaps increase the drag on your wings. And this allows you to increase your descent angle without increasing your airspeed. Remember that for the test, flaps help you increase your descent angle without increasing airspeed. But you might be wondering how this is possible since flaps also increase lift. Yes, they do, but they only increase lift if you're flying the same airspeed you were before you lowered them. But flaps actually allow us to fly at slower airspeeds, and when you can fly at slower airspeeds, this actually steepens your descent angle even more. Now, the reason that flaps allow us to fly at slower airspeeds is because flaps actually decrease the stall speed of an airplane, which actually makes it safer to use them. In fact, take a look at the stall speed on this Cessna 172 Sierra. When we have the flaps up, the airplane stalls somewhere around 48 knots. But if we were to lower the flaps all the way down, the airplane could actually fly 8 knots slower before it stalled. In fact, the approach and landing speeds for most airplanes are actually based on stall speed. The landing speed for most airplanes is usually somewhere around 1.3 times the stall speed in the landing configuration, or VSO. In other words, your landing speed only gives you a safety buffer if you have the flaps down. And this means when you're practicing landings with the flaps up, you need to be landing a little bit faster to protect yourself from stalling the airplane because landing speed is based on you having the flaps all the way down not flaps up. But that creates a small problem. Flying faster might keep us from stalling, but it also makes the airplane float more during the landing, and that increases your landing distance. This might not be a big deal if you're practicing landings on a runway that's two miles long, but it could certainly be a problem if you're landing on a thousand foot runway. By the way, if you're struggling with landings, I wrote a book that you might be interested in. It's a complete guide to how to make smooth, precise landings. It's called The Triangle Method, and you can get a digital copy of this book on my website at freepilottraining.net for $10. Or if you like paper books like this one, you can get this on Amazon. I think it's like 29 bucks right now. But anyway, flaps can make landings so much safer and easier because they allow you to fly at slower airspeeds. But flaps can also be a huge help on takeoffs as well. In fact, for most training airplanes, some of the takeoffs you're going to be learning require the use of flaps as well. For example, most Cessnas recommend 10 degrees of flaps during soft field takeoffs. And some of the Cessna 172s require the use of flaps during short field takeoff. This is because flaps increase lift like we talked about earlier. In fact, not too many people know this, but most airplanes are designed so that anytime you use 50% or less flaps, the wings will create more lift than drag. And if you use more than 50% of the flaps, the airplane's wings will create more drag than lift. That's why you can really drop the airplane super fast if you lower the flaps all the way down during an approach. So if you're ever super high, don't be afraid to use all the flaps. That's what they're there for. In fact, the C-130 actually uses 50% flaps for all takeoffs because that is the max lift configuration for that specific airplane. And that's why we can take off in ridiculously short distances, in case you were wondering. So, 
Not only can flaps increase your decent angle during a landing, they can also shorten your takeoff and landing distances as well if they're used according to the aircraft flight manual or the pilot's operating handbook. In fact, this is gonna be your best friend when you start your flight training. You're gonna hear me say this over and over again, but every airplane is different, so the POH is an important document that you need to be familiar with during your training. In fact, let me show you something kind of cool about these newer Cessna 172s with more powerful engines. Notice here that by using 10 degrees of flaps on this particular model, you can actually reduce your total distance over an obstacle by as much as 10%. This means that the flaps actually improve the climb angle on this particular aircraft as well. We'll be talking about this more in an upcoming lesson, but in order to get the best angle possible, you have to fly a specific airspeed so the airplane can climb like a beast over these obstacles. So flaps can give you a lot of options as a pilot. And once again, landing with flaps can make things a lot safer when you're coming in for an approach. With that in mind, your instructor is gonna have you practice landings in all flap configurations. And that's because there are times when it might actually be beneficial to land with less flaps. One particular time this might be handy is during gusty crosswinds. Flaps are really subject to gusty winds. When the flaps are lowered, the airplane can get tossed around quite a bit. That's probably one downside to them, but overall they still make flying way safer because they reduce stall speed. Now, there are four common types of flaps that you should be familiar with as a pilot. Keep in mind, some airplanes don't have flaps. This is more common on some of the older airplanes. I guess people weren't buying these as often because they realized how awesome flaps were. Anyway, the first type of flap you might see is a plane flap. These are the most basic type of flaps. These are attached to the trailing edge of the wing and they work a lot like the ailerons through a hinge mechanism directly behind the trailing edge of the wing. Split flaps, on the other hand, are deflected from the lower surface of the airfoil. The hinges on these are underneath the wings. This allows the flaps to be completely separate from the wing surface since the flaps move separately from the wing itself. Slotted flaps are the most common flaps in use today. These are similar to plane flaps, but they allow air to flow over the upper surface of the flap to increase lift while still providing the drag needed for slow flight. Fowler flaps are a type of slotted flap. Slotted flaps have simple hinges on the trailing edge of the wing, which allows them to lower, but a Fowler flap actually allows the flap to move back and down. Not only does this allow airflow over the top of the flap like the regular slotted flap, but it also increases the surface area of the wing, which significantly improves the lift that our wings produce because they're increasing the camber of the wing. Now, there's actually quite a bit more information when it comes to the different types of flaps. So if you want to go in more detail on that, be sure to check out the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge in Chapter 6. But this is everything I think you should know about and everything you need to know for the written exam. Hey, I wanna thank you for joining me today on free pilot training. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button for me. And if you need a free copy of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, be sure to check out my website at freepilottraining.net. You'll find that over there for free and a bunch of other stuff that I know you guys are gonna love. Thanks for watching. See